Welcome back, my friends, the show that never ends. So glad you could attend. Yesterday, we're going to look at the most expensive, biggest, budgeted, independent art house pick to come out this year and probably for a while. And we're talking about Cloud Atlas, okay? Now, it's brought to us by director, writers, uh, uh, Tom uh, Tw Tyquer and Andy Wachowski and Lana Wachowski, formerly known as the Wachowski Brothers. Now, this is an ambitious movie that gives us six tales that are intercut amongst each other, and it's a story of truth and how things are connected and just... Lots of stuff going on in this film, okay? You, you got a, a story of a 19th century kind of a drama about a, the story of a guy who's writing in a journal about his experience traveling across the Pacific. You got a 70s action thriller about a murder at a nuclear power plant. You got a modern comedy uh, farce angle with uh, about a publisher, a really old one who gets put in a nursing home. We get a story about a tortured composer from the past, and we get a story about a rebellious clone in the future, and then we get a post-apocalyptic future that's after that that tells another story about a primitive tribe that is needed by a high-tech society that's all that's pretty much left on Earth. And uh, they're all intercut with each other. This isn't like, you know, you've got Crash or you've got one of those other films where they uh, are all in the same town location and you get to see the stories intermingle with each other. No, they, they, these stories kind of intermingle with each other, some more than most, but we're talking spans of time between the intermingling. We're not talking about things that happen within the same town, within the same time period, okay? So this is an ambitious film, the way they did this. It's edited like an independent film, which is probably going to turn some people off because it is not linear by any means, okay? Uh, but you got, first off, listen to this cast. I mean, they got all these big names attached to it. Tom Hanks, Halle Berry, Jim Broadbent, who was beautiful in it, Hugo Weaving, fantastic. Jim Sturgis, Duna Bai, uh, Ben Winshaw, uh, Wishaw, excuse me, Keith David, James Darcy. Then you got Susan Sarandon and Hugh Grant in this as well. All these stars attached to it, exercising their acting chops on a film that it looks like a big budget blockbuster film, but when you sit down and look at it, it's edited like an independent film, and they're acting in it like an independent film. They're getting to do roles they may not get a chance to do. Most of these character people, uh, actors, are great character actors and they need it because each one of them has multiple roles. They each have at least one role in each story, all right? And I guarantee you won't pick them out in every story because some of them uh, just blew my mind when they put the credits at the end, which you should stay for at least the first part of it, uh, to see what characters they all played because it will blow your mind that some of the roles some of these actors actually took in. I mean, some of them are in the background on some stories and some are in the forefront in the stories. That's okay. It helps add to uh, kind of seal the scenes together. I mean, this film is edited like one film, even though it's six stories. And what I mean by that is you'll have someone in the future go into an elevator or talk about something, and then where you would think the next logical progression for the scene would go, it goes there, but it goes there on the past story or on the future story. And I thought that was amazing. And the visual effects of this film are just stunning. Stunning. Okay, just visually beautiful from the futuristic soul to the post-apocalyptic world to the, the Pacific story. All the visuals just visually entertaining and very done like art pieces rather than just your normal commercial film. For me, I had to stop trying to link everything together, okay, and try to figure out, well, why is this together? Because it does come together for the most part at the end, though some things at the end you will have to think about afterwards to figure out exactly what connected everything. And that's what I, what's really good about a film. If it can get you thinking and chewing on it afterwards uh, and talking about it to people and cause massive dis discussions about what exactly what was going on and what themes are that signifies a beautiful movie and that's what cloud atlas is for me folks five stubs from the movie man for me very little complaints about this film at all about the only thing was maybe the dialogue in some areas was a little hard to catch at the beginning especially in the post-apocalyptic future where the tribes had their own dialogue and you got to pay attention at first to figure out how that dialogue is structured 
but that didn't take away from the experience, which is what Cloud Atlas is. It's an experience. Some people call it a mess, and I can see that as well. Just go into the film, sit down, and pay attention. If you pay attention, you will at least get uh, all six stories and be able to follow all six stories, and then afterwards, you will have a lot of things to discuss with your friends besides saying, oh, that movie just sucked, because if you say that, then you really weren't watching. And then about do it for us here at the final cut. Till next time, folks, keep that ticket stop.